Now, I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion and organized religion. Absolutely convinced of it. And I, I'm glad that you applaud, because it's a very great problem for those who oppose this motion, isn't it? How are they going to ban religion? How are they going to stop the expression of religious loathing, hatred, and bigotry? And I speak as someone who's a fairly regular target of this, and not just in rhetorical form. I have been the target of many death threats. I know in, within a f short distance of where I'm currently living in Washington, I can name two or three uh, people whose names you'd probably know who can't go anywhere now without a security detail because of the criticisms they've made of one monotheism in particular. And this is in the capital city of the United States. So I know what I'm talking about, and I also have to, have to notice that the sort of people who ring me up and say they know where my children go to school, and they certainly know what my home number is and where I live, and what they're going to do to them and to my wife and to me, and who I have to take seriously because they have done it to people I know, uh, are just the people who are going to seek the protection of the hate speech law if I say what I think about their religion, which I'm now going to do. <laughs> because I don't, have any, um, I don't have any what you might call ethnic bias. I have no grudge of that sort. I can rub along with pr pretty much anyone of any, as it were, origin or sexual orientation or language group, except people from Yorkshire, of course, um, <laughs> who are completely untakeable. Um, and I'm beginning to resent the confusion that's being imposed on us now, and there was some of it this evening, between uh, religious belief, uh, bl blasphemy, ethnicity, profanity, and what one might call multicultural etiquette. It's quite common now for people to use the expression, for example, anti-Islamic racism, as if an attack on a religion was an attack on an ethnic group. The word Islamophobia, in fact, is beginning to acquire the opprobrium of the, uh, that was once reserved for racial prejudice. This is a subtle and very nasty insinuation that needs to be met head on. Do I, who've read Freud, and know what the future of an illusion really is, and know that religious belief is ineradicable as long as we remain a stupid, poorly evolved mammalian species, think that some Canadian law is going to solve this problem? Please. No, our problem is this. Our prefrontal lobes are too small, and our adrenaline glands are too big, and our thumb-finger opposition isn't all that it might be. And we're afraid of the dark, and we're afraid to die, and we believe in the truths of holy books that are so stupid and so fabricated that a child can, and all children do, but as you can tell by their questions, actually see through them. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. And I claim that right. Now let's not dance around, not all monotheisms are exactly the same at the moment. They're all based on the same illusion, they're all plagiarisms of each other, but there's one in particular that at the moment is proposing a serious menace, not just to freedom of speech and freedom of expression, but to quite a lot of other freedoms too. And this is the religion that exhibits the horrible trio of self-hatred, self-righteousness, and self-pity. I'm talking about militant Islam. Globally, it's a gigantic power. Globally, it's a gigantic power. It controls an enormous amount of oil wealth, several large countries and states, uh, with, a, with an enormous fortune. It's pumping the ideology of Wahhabism and Salafism around the world, poisoning societies where it goes, ruining the minds of children, stultifying the young in its madrasas, training people in violence, uh, making a cult of death and suicide and murder. That's what it does globally. It's quite strong. In our societies, it poses as a cringing minority whose, whose faith you might offend, which deserves all the protection uh, that, that a small and vulnerable group might need. Now, it makes quite large claims for itself, doesn't it? It says it's the final revelation. It says that God spoke to one illiterate businessman in the Arabian Peninsula three times through an archangel, and that the resulting material, which as you can see when you read it, is largely plagiarized from the Old and the New Testament, almost all of it actually plagiarized ineptly from the Old and New Testament, is to be accepted as a divine revelation and as the final and unalterable one and that those who do not accept this revelation are fit to be treated as cattle, infidels, potential chattel, slaves and 
victims. Well, I tell you what, I don't think Mohammed ever heard those voices. I don't believe it. And the likelihood that I'm right, as opposed to the likelihood that a shepherd who couldn't, a businessman couldn't, who couldn't read, had bits of the Old and New Testament re-dictated to him by an archangel, I think puts me much more near the position of being objectively correct. But who is the one under threat? The person who promulgates this and says, I'd better listen because if I don't, I'm in danger? Or me, who says, no, I think this is so silly, you could even publish a cartoon about it. And up go the placards, and up go the yells, and the howls, and the screams. Behead those. This is in London. This is in Toronto. This is in New York. It's right in our midst now. Behead those. Behead those who cartoon Islam. Do they get arrested for hate speech? No. Might I get in trouble for saying what I've just said about the Prophet Muhammad? Yes, I might. Where are your priorities, ladies and gentlemen? You're giving away what's most precious in your own society, and you're giving it away without a fight, and you're even praising the people who want to deny you the right to resist it. Shame on you while you do this. Make the best use of the time you've got left. This is really serious.